Hello YouTube, welcome to this new case profile series on our boy Hemingway. This is going to be, I think, the longest case profile series I'm going to be doing on this channel. And it follows up the one I did about Netherbeast. Now, I have enough material to keep going on the Netherbeast series. I'm sort of waiting on certain uh, areas of YouTube where I think I can get more of his Eden videos. I'm not sure. It does feel like I've capped out the amount of uh, information I can gather. So I'm just going to wait a little bit and see. But for the time being, we're going to focus on someone else. Now, you might have noticed I did not put the name of the person in the title. This is for two reasons. Why? One, because um, as I said before, do series are ran mostly because I want to educate people on these individuals. I don't necessarily want these people to suffer from the videos I make, which is why I don't include their real name. And I would appreciate if you didn't. Now, I'm not your parent, so I cannot force you to. And uh, as I said before, I would rather never have to do that. But usually, if you try and dox people in my comments, I will have to ban you. It hasn't happened yet. That being said, with the individual we're talking about today, everyone knows who he is. So there's no, no such thing as doxing him, in a, in a sense. But the second reason why I don't want his name to be out there is because I, you know that you're on this channel and I comment everywhere. That's how you found the channel. And because of that, a lot of unsuspecting eyes find the channel all the time. And if they find that video, I don't want them to go look up his channel afterwards. I don't want him to get any views of my back. So I would appreciate if we stuck to his nicknames, especially the ones he doesn't like. If you just want for some reason to write his real name, go ahead. I'm not going to ban you for that, but I am not going to do that. In the description, you will find the uh, timestamps of the video because this is going to be super long. I have enough mens and information on that guy to last 10 hours. I don't know how long this case profile series is going to be, how long I'm going to make it run, but it might be something that is going to take a full year to develop with one episode a month or more. We'll see. Depends on the reaction and if you guys like it or not. As far as what I want to get from these episodes, my goal is really first off to have fun. Uh, I just want to expose everything about the guy and we can have a good laugh about it because basically everything he does is laughable. But I also want to kill any remnants of uh, credibility that he doesn't deserve in my mind. It's just my opinion. But I see a ton of people who discovered him very recently or who gave him a, a, another chance and they think he changed and they think his information is now good and he should be listened to. I'm going to prove you in these videos, in this case profile series, that it's not the case. He hasn't changed and his information is still just as bad as it used to be. You should not be giving that person views. So that's it for the introduction for the case profiles. I'm also going to set some limitations right now. I will not be discussing that person's childhood. I Most people who are interested in that guy and the men's know about supposedly what happened to him as a kid. We have no way to know if it's true, if it's a lie on his part. It involves certain people who passed away and I don't want to disturb the dead because they might have done absolutely nothing to deserve it. So I'm not going to mention it. I will dive into some of the most interesting psychological aspects of that individual, but I don't want to have to refer to those things and base my reasoning on that. I don't think it's useful. That being said, whenever he mentions family members in events that happened right now, as he's a grown adult now, these I will talk about because it's, it's him bringing it up basically. So he has no issues with people discussing it, right? Because he posted it on the internet. Uh, so that's one part where I would also appreciate if you didn't, you know, uh, talk about that part of his childhood too much in the comments. That being said, again, if that's what makes you laugh, go, go ahead. Uh, and as far as the men's, because this is going to be long, I would also appreciate if you guys didn't spoil any of the men's in the comments. 
because I guarantee you that I know most of what is to be said about that guy. So if you can be patient and wait until the last episode uh, to reveal the hidden mens, I would appreciate it because there's a chance you're just going to reveal something I was going to discuss. And I say that I know most of what is to be told about the guy because I've been watching him ever since he started on YouTube. And I've been pretty good at keeping up with him through the years, so I don't think I missed too many things. But of course, I'm fallible, so if at the end of the series there are certain things I didn't discuss that are interesting and funny, bring them up, please. But that's going to be for later. What uh, the goal of this is going to be just like with Nether Beast, I'm uh, not going to run it in a chronological order. I'm going to bring up events that I think are interesting and that speak a lot about the type of person who uh, Jason Bloho is. Uh, so if you don't know who he is, I encourage you to go watch the Danknet video about him because it's in chronological order, so it gives you a better understanding. That being said, with the thumbnail that I'm going to use, I fully uh, ex expect people who click on this are going to be very familiar with that person and are just here to uh, have a good time. So this is going to be meant upon meant upon meant. That being said, just like with Nether Beast, I want to try and analyze the, the actions and the patterns that I notice in that person to try and decorticate who they are because they, just like with Nether Beast, are a good example of someone who is delusional and someone who should not be trusted for many reasons but also a good representation of what you could become if you let your life go completely off the rails. So that's going to also be, outside of making fun of him, an analysis of who he is, in fact, so that we dive a little bit deeper. And because I just said that, keep in mind also, I'm not going to be mentioning some of the most well-known events, like the fake Merc stuff that has been spoken about a thousand times. I'm not super interested in that. I will mention mostly things that are not super well known and that I think are interesting and fun. And also, and I'm going to finish right there, I'm sorry for the long introduction, but because it's going to be a long series about Hemingway, I needed to open with this. I'm not a vigilante. I have my own sense of what is right and what is wrong. I have my own sense of integrity. I personally believe that there can be no forgiveness if there is no apology. And you cannot forget the actions of someone who is actively trying to sweep them under the rug when they never recognized their faults. That's how I live my life. If that's not how you live your life, that's fine, but that's how I'm going to approach this thing when I go through all of my mens and all of the data I got from the guy. So that's that. That's now out of the way. Let's dive deep because I have pages upon pages upon pages on stuff that I want to talk about when it comes to our oh boy anyway. So let's get started. He claimed he was obese in high school, but he also claims he was a long distance runner. Do, those two variables cannot exist together. It's not possible. And because he also never claimed to have lost a ton of weight in high school, and even if he did, he, did he just do a crash diet and then suddenly he was a marathon runner? He also said that he was a very good long distance runner. And that's a trend you're going to see with that guy. When Bloho lies, he goes all the way. He doesn't just tell white lies that could potentially be believable. No, no, no. He was a champion long distance runner. And he was also recruited by the CIA apparently at that time meaning that people were apparently actively going after an obese teenager for what mercenary work. Uh, keep in mind also, and that's just something that I just realized I should have said, I'm just doing a face cam. The issue is I cannot include proofs or sources because that guy, and I'm going to talk about it later, has a tendency to strike every video he can find with his face on it because he has a claim on them, because some of the material that people use to expose him belongs to him. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to uh, narrate it. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to go out, go out and say it. The person we're talking about is a character. It's someone from a story. They do not exist. I'm not citing any real name. 
The person I'm talking about is a delusional bald man called Jason Blow. So there. Now that's out of the way, let's keep going. We have access, and if you look on the internet, you will find it, of a mugshot, a mugshot of him when he was arrested by cops. That was back in the days. That was when he was still relatively young. He looked extremely doppy. He had a moustache. The mugshot is hilarious. You should go and find it. And when he was questioned about that, he answered that he was arrested by the cops, that he apparently broke one of the police officer's ribs and stole their gun. So picture it in your head. He broke their ribs, took the gun and sort of like got them down like this. The truth is people put, managed to get their hands on the actual written statement that the cops produced. He was arrested because he owned a gun that didn't belong to him that was found on his person. He could apparently barely answer the cop uh, when they tried to question him about it. And the judge decided that he was most likely mentally impaired. And because of the tests that were run on him, apparently he was not super functioning as an adult. That's a guy that claims to have 147 IQ. 147 IQ is incredibly high and usually um, I'm this is stereotypical but when you speak to someone who has that high of an IQ you're going to be able to tell and when you tell do you speak to someone or you listen to someone like Blurino you can also tell that they don't have that high of an IQ claimed also to be uh, in the honor jazz class meaning that he was apparently very gifted with instruments he never demonstrated any ability to play any instrument, ever. There are some pictures of him with a guitar, but he, he's never played live. So that's another lie. Uh, he also claimed to get a 1420 ACE AT score, which is one of the highest percentile we can get for that score. We also know that since he went to community college, there's a very little chance of him actually getting that type of score because why would someone so gifted go to community college? He claimed to have two black belts and he also claims to be able to kill people with his kicks. He never said in which styles his two black belts are because apparently when you reveal the martial arts that you know, it suddenly becomes completely useless. So if I fight someone and they tell me, hey, I have a black belt in Kokushiken Karate. Now I can block all of their punches, I can I know all of their moves and it's completely useless. But he didn't want to lower his operational capacities. Sure. Uh, lately, he's been uh, LARPing about being able to kill people with his kicks, saying that if you can box quad 500 pounds, you can kill people with a kick. That shows a complete misunderstanding of what a kick is. A kick is, doesn't work like, for example, a, a club would. It's more like a whip. It's using your leg like a whip. You use your hips and the rotation of your hips to strike people with it. Your ability to push from the floor with a weight on your back has very little to do with it. Even if you could argue that it makes your, your front kick better, but front kicks are rarely used because they're fairly easy to dodge. So that doesn't go in hand. Someone who has one black belt should know that. He graduated high school because he was very proud to show his high school diploma, but he has no college diploma that has been certified. Uh, but he says he could have been a doctor. So you are telling me a guy who struggled to graduate high school, who didn't even get a college diploma from a community college, could have been a doctor. I'm not saying you need to have a college degree to be smart, but I am saying that if you lie about having the ability to be a doctor, which is one of the careers in this country and in the world that requires the most years of grueling college, I mean, th those two just don't go hand in hand at all. And it, this is very typical with people like him. They don't managed to accomplish anything, but they could have become president of the universe if they wanted, right? They just don't want to. 
Like that's their excuse. Oh, I don't want to. Like he could have been a doctor and actually make a good living, but instead he chose to make videos on YouTube, I guess. That makes a lot of sense. He claimed to be a male model. Again, not trying to be rude, the guy is a 2 out of 10. He cannot be a model for anything on, in any country on this planet. And even in space, he has no chance. He just does not have what it takes to be a model. I don't have what it takes to be a model, right? You need to have a certain body type and you need to be very high percentile in facial structure and in beauty in general. People are not going to hire someone who is ugly to put on publicities. You want people to buy your products, not puke at the view of the commercials you're running, right? So again, why lie about something so stupid? We can see the mugshot of him when he was younger. He looked awful. Why lie about that? Everyone can see with their eyes that he was never pretty in his entire life and he will never be. Again, pattern of lies. If you still believe that that guy is someone you should, uh, you should actually trust, look at the way that person lives their life. They lie about every single aspect of it, even if there's no point. I really want that case profile to be just like I did with Netherbeast, where I tried to make people realize the type of indiv individual they were following. What I'm saying here can be verified online. Just because I don't give you the sources doesn't mean you don't have to go and check it. But if you want to check it, you can easily find every single thing I'm saying. And if that doesn't convince you that he shouldn't be listened to, nothing will. I will also, because for now we're just doing uh, lies that he said, I will also talk about his training methodologies and, uh, and show you that he doesn't, he is not to be trusted even in that. Okay. The talk about his genetics. This is something that is recurrent on his channel. He is what I call the perfect example of Schrodinger's genetics. You know those people who, when you tell them they have bad genetics, they, they say, oh, no, no, I have good genetics, and they find reasons X and Y. But then when they fail at something, suddenly they have bad genetics. So when it's good for them and it makes them look good, they're going to claim to have godlike genetics. But if they can use it as an excuse for why they didn't manage to do something, suddenly, oh, it's not that good. You will, and it's not just that guy, it's, it's very common on YouTube Fitness. He says he isn't bald. We can all see he has a bald head. He has never let his hair grow, but he's not bald. What level of delusion do you need to be on to lie about not having hair on your head when people can clearly see your scalp? Especially when it would take, what, three months for him to not shave his head to prove he has hair. He has no hair, he's bald. But again, he just cannot accept the reality in which he lives. He is that delusional. He claims to have eaten 13 large pizzas. 13 large pizzas, remember, uh, it, it equates to an amount of calories that is above 20,000. It's not possible. Even the best of the best competitive eaters don't even come close. Uh, that guy, Bloho, made a video about him eating bananas and he ate like 12 and he tried to equate the two, but it has nothing to do with one another. And also, why would you be proud of something like this? Why would you be proud of being able to eat 10 bananas? Who actually thinks people are going to respect that? He apparently helped athletes pass drug tests at college and he hinted at it being uh, the, the, a college in Texas, which uh, the name escapes me now, but it's a very famous college in Texas, a and I think, something like this. Uh, we know he never went there. He went to community college. So which athletes did you help uh, blow hole in community college? What, the, the Frisbee team? Did they take drugs to win the frisbee competitions? Is that it? He claims to have been 5% body fat. Uh, he never was. 5% body fat is extremely low. We have pictures of uh, Hemingway when he was uh, in his prime. 
he was he was higher body fat than I am now. He was maybe 18%. There's one picture of him posing uh, where he looks relatively lean, meaning that he's around my level. He was never uh, 5% body fat. But that 5% body fat was an argument he used uh, back when he started his channel to get people to trust him when it came to diet. So when people say, oh, but he's just... These are just jokes. No, no. These are arguments he used so that people would trust him. And because most people are noobs, people believed him. His argument for why he didn't have any good pictures of him in a lean state, it was lost in the fire. This is, uh, this, that level of lie and, and arguments is like fifth grader level. That's the kid that, that shows to class and says that his dog ate the homework. Lost in a fire. He claims to have squatted 600 pounds. He claims to have benched with a reverse grip 500 pounds. He claims to have leg pressed 2,000 pounds for 20 reps and to be able to rep six plates on the deadlifts. Of course, there are no proofs of that. There is no picture, there is no video, there is no testimony of anyone. There are no powerlifting records, none of that. But we're supposed to believe him. A 500 reverse, reverse bench is very close to the world record for that. And the guys who hit those numbers weigh 300 pounds. He does not have the height and the frame to be 300 pounds. He's already obese at like 220. 2,000 for 20 reps on the leg press is stronger than Ronnie Coleman. So I guess he saw the video of Ronnie and thought, oh, well, I'm just going to lie about that to look cool. How can you believe that clown on anything he says? Uh, there are pics of him younger, and that's what interests me as a bodybuilder, where he claimed to have 20 inches arms. On the pictures we can see of him, his arms were full of syntho. And when I say full, you know those uh, videos of Russian kids who are crazy in the head and they pump their bicep full of syntho and it looks awful and about to burst? That's what it looked like. It looked like a balloon animal instead of arms. So he never had big arms and he is a complete hypocrite because he's dogging on bodybuilding a ton, even though he used to do that, that used to be his number one goal and he was so bad at it that he had to use oil to have what he thought was an impressive physique, but it looked like a min the, the Michelin man, so it looked awful. And the issue too is that he, was, he had a garbage physique even when he used to run PEDs because he admitted to, to run a ton of PEDs back in the days. And he tried to use that as a way to uh, weasel himself into certain types of bodybuilding forums where he tried to become a guru and uh, help people with their regimen when it comes to certain substances. Again, giving advice to people when he himself never managed to accomplish anything and engaged in dangerous practices like injecting oil in his arms. He still does that to this day. He gives advice to people when he is not qualified and he hurts people with his advice because he is done right stupid. You're taking advice from a guy who is just clinically an idiot. And uh, it's also the reason why I was motivated to make that uh, case profile series because He's a grade A hypocrite when it comes to bodybuilding. And I love bodybuilding. I don't like what he says about my sport. He's right in certain aspects. But the issue is that it always comes from a place of envy and dishonesty with him. This is also the issue. He might have said certain things in the past or he still does that are right. But he doesn't say them because he believes in them. He says them because he's a hateful, hateful midget. And... He does that for money. I'm going to go back to that, but the reason why he makes videos is to make money. If you watch his videos and you think he's doing that to help you, nah, he, it's the only way he can make bucks. That's it. That's why he makes those vids. Okay, so as I said, he had, he, had, uh, he claimed that his biceps, because now his biceps are just trashed. Uh, you can see he has abscesses in there, like it's lacking a part of the muscle. He claims it was because he injured them, which if he did, that's his own fault. If you hurt your bicep, especially if you're on gear, most likely it's because you were an idiot about your use and the weights you used and your form. But 
it wasn't even that. He destroyed his arms because he pumped them full of synthol, and most likely the doctors who removed the synthol let him know that he damaged the arms beyond repair. This is why he still has toothpick arms to this day. They don't grow because they cannot grow anymore. He ruined any chance of, of having good arms. And his physique was garbage even if, when he was massively enhanced. So you're taking advice from a guy who never managed to achieve any respectable amount of weights on the bar or physique goals even when he was taking whatever he could get his hands on by his own admission on the forearms. He still claims to have 18 inches arms. Uh, if I was a viewer, I would feel insulted in my intelligence. This is like Nether Beast. We are going to see that those two have a ton in common because they share the same delusional traits. He doesn't have 18 inches arms. Nether Beast didn't have 21 inches arms. It's clear as day when you watch it. But yet he still does claim those 18 inches arms. He just won't take them. And back in the day, there was a, 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 an hilarious video about him taping his arms where he was at 17.5 where the band was super loose around the arms. And I really want you to uh, pay attention to what a 17.5 arm actually looks like. Like you're supposed to have a peak, you're supposed to have some tricep. If you're taping something that is the equivalent of a, uh, of a, uh, a stick and the result is 17.5, the tape is loose. There's no way around that. And still to this day, he would be lucky to have 14, 15 inches arms. And yet he still keeps lying about it, I guess because some people believe him, but I know that most people don't believe him. He's just lying to himself. He also lies about his weight. Uh, he will not uh, weight himself, which is why all the people who say, oh, he's strong. He, is he? You don't know how much he weights. He could be 240. And in which case, most of his lifts would fall into the two times body weight range, which is not strong. For someone who's been training 20 years, it's atrocious. About the height, um, I'm fairly certain he is not 5'9". I'm going to talk about that more, but he also lies about his body fat, where he claims to be 17%. 17% is me. I'm 17%. Look at him. He's at the very minimum 25% body fat. Non-negotiable. Minimum. He cannot be lower than that. It's not possible. He is medically obese, but he just cannot accept it because he's too lazy to lose weight. And he's way too heavy for his frame. He's, he has some of the, one of the tiniest frame I've ever seen. He has very narrow shoulders. He has wide hips. He's 5'7". He cannot allow himself to be above 200 pounds. That's why he looks so bad. It's because he just, he's just stuck in that body dysmorphia of his. Uh, and again, he claims to be 5'9". There's a video of him measuring himself. I don't believe that for one second. What I think he did in the video is he hid the tape underneath the mats so that it would add two inches of the mats. Not sure, but when you watch videos of him outside of his gym, interacting with people and the way he relates to other people, he clearly looks very, very small. He's the same size, if not smaller, than most women he walks around. So 5'9 wouldn't make him look that way. He also looks extremely stumpy. You could say it's because of his proportions. That's possible. But it's, this is based on, based on footage that he published. So it's not like someone took the footage and manipulated it to make, make him look a certain way. He himself published that. So unless he lives in the land of giants, but since he lives in the south of the US, that's one of the places in the country where the average size is the lowest for men and women. So it just doesn't hold up. Um, he, and this is one of the key points of why you shouldn't be following him, he just Googles stuff. When you watch a video of that guy, he went on Google, he tried and remember certain points and then he turns the camera on and he just states the points. Why are you listening to that? Why don't you just go on Google? And that also goes for a lot of the science YouTube fitness channels. All they do is read a study to you. 
What, what, are you five? Do you need someone to read you a bedtime story? Why don't you go and read it yourself? And why do you need someone else's interpretation of a study? Don't you have the intellectual ability to interpret yourself? Do you need someone to force feed you the data? That shouldn't be the case, but that's the reason why some people watch him. And you also watch someone who doesn't understand the information that he's uh, actually publishing on his channel and will willfully misinterpret it if it fits his narrative. For example, he once read that uh, Michael Phelps ate carbs all day and therefore he surmised that athletes needed carbs to uh, fuel their bodies and he justified his heavy consumption of carbs that put him in a hefty caloric surplus on this. Keep in mind also he's not an athlete, but we're going to get back on that later. He calls himself an athlete, right? That's the next point. He has no mobility. Awful. He box squats because he's incapable of going ass to grass on the squats. He always complains about having shoulder pains on the bench. He's been benching 20 years. At what point do you figure out that you actually need to work on your mobility to be able to bench pain-free? He cannot get in position for a proper deadlift. His upper back is always rounded. He cannot do face pulls. He cannot fully extend his arms over his head. And yet you take advice from that guy on mobility. He has no idea about what that is. And he's not an athlete. I'm sorry. If you're an athlete and you don't look like you lift, that's fine by me. Maybe you do shot put. Maybe you are sumo wrestlers. These are athletes. But for me, you become an athlete when you actually manage to put to use the body that you built. He doesn't even compete in powerlifting. He's not an athlete. And... Just like with Netherbeast too, Netherbeast, it, it's always funny how the people lie about the aspects of their perso persona that are the most obviously uh, recognizable. Netherbeast kept talking about health and supreme health. He coughs and he burps throughout all of his Q&As. He just looks like he's constantly trying to get rid of something in his body. And Blaha, who claims to be an athlete, is constantly gasping for hair as he speaks and the guy exhausts through his nose so often that it's a miracle he hasn't created a tornado yet he's constantly fighting to be able to actually keep talking a normal human is able to talk like this i don't need to catch my breath i don't need to take breaks where i start the camera i do <sighs> this is just strange behavior especially coming from someone who's supposed to be an athlete an athlete to me is supposed to have some levels of cardiovascular endurance. He has none. You realize that, right? You would, if you made him, him do 20 reps of squats, he would kill over and die. The Meniere disease now. So he claims that he had Meniere's, which is basically some uh, issue with your inner ear and you can have vertigo. Pretty sure he wouldn't be able to lift heavy weights if he had that also claims to have an, a heart condition. It's funny too, because when he eats the garbage foods that he used to show and now that he stopped showing, uh, that have very high cholesterol and that are known to cause heart problems, his heart condition never comes up. Uh, when he refuses to do any type of actual high intensity cardio to get his cardiovascular endurance up, his heart condition never comes up. But the second someone challenged him to do actually a, a, for once, a challenging set of heavy reps on the squats suddenly if he does squats his heart will and i quote blow up and he will die very convenient excuse his appetite his appetite he claims that his appetite is way too high and that's why he's fat that's not an excuse your appetite doesn't control you it's just a signal that your body is giving you so that it gets you to eat something you can disobey it if you want to what, it hurts your tummy, so you have to eat? That's a guy who thinks he's a tough guy and who tried to present himself as that alpha male, but when his tummy rumbles, he has to eat, really? But, but, keep in mind, he has narrow hips and he's bigger in person. Very important to keep in mind. Very narrow hips, you can, you can tell when you watch him, right? It's like, it's like watching Sergio Oliva. Right? It's to, the, the hips are so narrow that the upper body looks massive. No, it's actually the opposite. He has uh, what could only be described as very feminine hips. He has childbearing hips. 
which is garbage genetics, it's not really his fault, but that's what it is, it's the truth. But no, he claimed to have narrow hips, not bald, narrow hips. Bigger in person, of course, a 5'7 guy is bigger in person. You could see that on the footage of him with other people, right? He really looks big. And he claimed to have more muscle than Serge Nubre. If I got shirtless right now and I started, I got a pump and I started flexing and Serge Nubre magically appeared next to me, it would look like a, a, a father and son picture. It, I would look, I would be dwarfed out of oblivion by that guy. Now, I'm six feet to 10 with, a, with a, like 16, 17% body fat. Imagine Blaha on a stage ne uh, right next to Serge Nubre. Imagine how funny that would be to see the Black Panther right next to the, uh, what, whatever he calls himself, the Pell Orc. Uh, the pork mode is more fitting for that guy. Again, like how come, and I, it's a, a topic I'm going to, come, uh, to discuss again. Thank, thank the stars that people actually started thinking, well, there's something wrong with this guy. He might not be the best to take advice from, but you still had people back in the days when he would say stuff like this to actually think he was right. How do you actually watch that guy and think, oh yeah, he's bigger than Serge Dubre? Mm -mm -mm. He tried to cut weight more times than I can describe, but I, the reason why he doesn't cut weight, and there are pictures that show that, is because of the hips. Bone structure doesn't go away when you cut. It's just, it's just, how life is so if you have large hips and you cut they're still there and there's an incredible picture also a very sad picture of him when he was for once below 200 pounds the only thing you can see is those hips right at least when he's uh he's obese the weight hides the hips so it's actually it's a relief for the eyes of everyone uh, which is why he will never cut again, because he doesn't want to have to face the reality that his structure is just not suited to looking good. That's very sad for him. Uh, he also claims that the reason why he has so much fat on his belly and on the sides is because of loose skin. He also claims that uh, he has a gut because he eats so much fiber. Those two arguments don't make any sense. Uh, loose skin is what it is. It's loose skin. It's empty. If you have still fat in it, it's not loose skin. It's just fat rolls. That's the, the principle of it. And I think we're going to end up with this one because then we're going to start talking about uh, some stuff that's more juicy and I want to really get into it. He hates bodybuilding for the reasons I just described. He called out the supplement industry not because he was a white knight uh, hell-bent on saving youtube fitness but just because he was jealous because the truth is the, the second he got a chance to have a supplement industry pay him for to chill their supplements he just jumped on it so he had no problem with it he had problems with people making money out of it uh, and i can prove that also because a lot of people know that he tried asmr when ASMR was as, at its biggest and was becoming really big and prominent on YouTube, he tried to create a channel called Cardio Gamer. ASMR Cardio Gamer, I think. It will be linked eventually in the comments, I, I bet. But it was basically him playing World of Warcraft uh, and just talking to, into a shitty mic for hours upon hours. And there is an episode, a famous episode, where he actually takes the game and the mics with him to the bathroom and you can hear him take a piss because that guy just wants, he wants money, but he doesn't want to work for it. And therefore, ASMR looked like an easy way to not only talk to himself, which he loves doing, uh, invent lies and just get easy money. Uh, thankfully, it never got anywhere, but the, the video and the channels were preserved. So you can still access those videos if you want. And I'm going to end on this. For the people who still like him, who are going to come in the comments and say, oh, he changed and oh, you should give him another chance and blah, blah, blah. He's all about the money. He doesn't care about you. And uh, I can prove that right now. Go into his comments, watch one of his videos, right? Go into his comments and uh, 
type something within the video that you did not agree with, right? Contradict him. See how he reacts. Because I can tell you that he's not going to take it kindly. And uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but the dislikes he gets, they're all organic. There are no bots. It's people. It's the graveyard of people who he banned from his channel for openly speaking their mind, not being mean to him, just trying to discuss things that got banned. And I'm one of them. So we're going to wrap up with this, right? Uh, this is one sixth of the information I have about the guy. So you can expect more episodes on our boy anyway. Again, please don't spoil in the comments. There, are, there is so much more to come and I want to keep uh, bestowing the ments upon you. This episode for most of the hardcore and the people versed in blahatism, you already knew what I told you, but stay tuned because I think that there are a lot of information you don't know that I'm going to surprise you with in the upcoming installments. So that was the case profile series part one on our boy Hemingway, aka Jason Blow, aka the fake Muck. Thank you for watching. Leave any comments you would like and have a good day.